Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to continue on that journey of clinical management of dysglycemia. In the previous week, we discussed hypoglycemia, or low blood sugar. So if you want to look at some of the clinical strategies we use, go back to the prior video. Go ahead and share this video and like it so more patients can see these uh, videos uh, to help manage their dysglycemia. Today, we're going to talk about the management of insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, or metabolic syndrome. All right. So the clinical strategies we use in our office. So if we look at it, basically when we have insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, or type 2 diabetes, your sugar is elevated in the blood, right? And what happens with sugar elevation is that you start to damage uh, peripheral tissues, such as nerves, blood vessels, uh, vision. You can also damage uh, your kidneys. So it's very important to manage blood sugar, especially the elevated uh, portion, right? So when we look at it, lifestyle is very important for management. So increasing exercise. So in the beginning stages of pre-diabetes or insulin resistance, uh, in, in just the beginning stages where your blood sugar fasting might be about 100 to 110, 115, right? You want to be able to increase exercise level, reduce complex carbs, and reduce simple sugars. Pretty easy strategy. Increase exercise, reduce carbohydrates or simple sugars. When we get into more complex patients where we look at stage two, these are the people who actually have diabetes. They might be on a medication like metformin, right? Or they might be insulin dependent. So there are a lot of people who have this diabetes and they don't know how to get out of it. Why? Because they'll start to exercise, but everything hurts, right? My knees hurt, my joints hurt. I'm completely wiped out and exhausted. The reason they feel this way is because they have an inflammatory process going on as a result of the diabetes. You have to first control the inflammation before a patient can actually exercise. So when we look at stage two, we start exercise after inflammation is reduced. You have to check to see if that patient's inflammation is down. So you have to check things like ESR, or CRP or C-reactive protein, right? You have to see if there's an elevation in those markers before starting aggressive exercise. Exercise has to be to tolerance in the beginning for the stage two type of patient. Then we have to get them a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. Now, I've discussed this in the past, so you can go back and watch some of my other videos about ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. Essentially, what you want to do with ketogenic diets is that you want to utilize fats for fuel rather than sugars, right? So how do we do that? You have to increase good fat intake. It has to be at least 70% of your dietary calories in fats, followed by about 25% protein and about 5 to 3% of just uh, carbohydrates or fruit, right? So you have to be very careful in terms of how you do this, because if you do not do the ketogenic uh, diet properly, it actually causes more problems down the line, okay? So a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting is a strategy when we have a stage two type of patient. Then you have to avoid AGE, which is advanced glycated end products. Things that are like a steak that's very burnt around the sides, right? Um, it might be tasty, right? It's something that patients kind of like, but the advanced glycated end product will actually cause more problems for diabetics. The other one is you have to increase vegetable fibers. So even though you're on a ketogenic diet, you still have to have a good fiber content to manage blood sugar. So vegetable fibers, not fibers from fruit, okay? So, and the last thing is, we talked about this before, is reducing inflammation. You have to reduce the inflammation so you can increase um, uh, exercise tolerance so the patient can get back to health. 
What's the point of exercising if the next day you fall apart? You're sore for four, five, six days and you can't recover very well. That in itself will cause more inflammation, more oxidative stress, and it actually will increase blood sugar. So you have to be able to understand what is causing um, your problem and how to attack it. Just doing more doesn't necessarily get you better results in the long run. Okay, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.